Welcome to Third Floor Views, a production of Chesapeake Family Life, where we talk about health, education, and living with kids. I'm your host, Janet Jefferson. Today, we're talking about kids and online safety. And joining us is Derek Fisher, a cybersecurity expert, who is also a professor at Temple University and a middle grade author who has a series that helps kids safely navigate through different forms of connected technology. Thank you so much, Derek, for joining me today. Yeah, thank you, Janet. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on here. And I'm looking forward to the discussion. Definitely. To our viewers, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section and we'll get to those as they come up. Um, okay, so Derek, let's start at the beginning. Um, just sort of big picture. What do you feel like are some of the biggest concerns right now with online safety and kids? Um, so that's a big question. There's, you know, there's a lot to be concerned about. Um, I, you know, I work in the cybersecurity field. Uh, there's a lot of technology that we're exposed to uh, in the cybersecurity field. Um, there's, from the business perspective, a lot of companies have, you know, a lot of big things that they're trying to do with their uh, organization. But then we look at our, even our personal lives, you know, we all have uh, cell phones, uh, laptops, um, you know, computers, our devices, uh, whether they're our streaming devices or, you know, our connected uh, stereos and things like that. Everything's connected, right? And I think that's the uh, one of the biggest um, changes uh, from from now uh, compared to even you know five, 10, 15 years ago is that almost everything that you have in your house is now connected. So I think the the challenge is around keeping things safe, secure, private uh, have increased uh, dramatically over the past uh, you know ten, fifteen uh, years. Yeah, that's an interesting point. The The level of connectedness has definitely gone up, um, even to the point of like, it includes your house now, you know, yep. with smart homes and everything that that includes. So there's so many layers that we have to consider that maybe we didn't before. Um, so thinking about going back to school and kids are um, maybe interacting with their computer in um, a more academic way than they had over the, the summer. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about how, um, you know, parents should talk to their kids about online safety. Um, you know, we want to set up our kids for success. What should parents really be teaching their kids about how to be safe online? Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of good uh, basics uh, that we should consider, especially um, there is a difference between a device that your school provides uh, and a device that you provide to your to your child. Um, there's going to be different uh, what we would call controls around those devices. So the school device is going to have a little bit more tighter controls around you know what uh, things can be accessed, uh, what type of apps can be downloaded, and they're also monitored, right? So on the other side of that, the personal devices um, that you may be providing to your child, those those are under your control. So you can have you know controls that are uh, very strict, or you can have controls that are very loose. So I think there's um, there's a couple of things as students are going back to school is you know think about those uh, devices whether you you're using a school device. There's going to be limitations on that. Um, there's also going to be you know monitoring. So you know keep that in keep that in mind, and then you know, understand like what the policies are in the school about use of devices. Um, I know some schools uh, say no devices at all throughout the school day. Some say, you know, keep them in your locker or there's maybe some time periods throughout the day where, you know, the students are allowed to bring them out and use them. Also keep in mind that, um, you know, not all of your, uh, all the friends of your children have access to those devices, depending on when, uh, you know, how old they are and, and what grade they're in and, and really the parents' discretion about uh, what their, you know, feeling is and discretion around, you know, devices. Um, I know, you know, my daughter, she's going into seventh grade. It's a little bit different now. Most of her friends do have, um, you know, phones or, or, you know, have access to devices like that. However, you know, fifth grade, fourth grade, uh, it's a little bit different where some students may have that, some students don't. So I think it's also important for parents to have that discussion with their children about, hey, you know, keep in mind that uh, not everybody's on these things, you know, not everybody has access to them, because uh, there is that does get a bit of, you know, FOMO, right, fear of missing out, uh, and that can be, you know, not intentionally, but maybe uh, unintentionally a form of, 
I don't want to say bullying, but a form of maybe shame, right? Because mm-hmm. then I think that adds peer pressure to to the children that don't have access to it to say, hey, you know, like then that pressure changes over to the parents where, you know, those children start asking their parents about those things. But I think, you know, that the the concerns and the dangers and the risks that are out there for, for children these days related to these devices is real. Um, I think parents need to be able to talk to their children about some of the common concerns that, you know, not just children, but all of us have when we're on uh, the internet and, and using these devices. Um, things like always be skeptical of the things you see online. Um, a lot of the people that you may be talking to online aren't necessarily, they may not even be real. Uh, they could be uh, bots, they could be uh, fake accounts. Um, they're, they're, it's very easy to pretend to be somebody online. Uh, you, you know, it's very easy to take that. So I think just those kind of common, um, you know, things to keep in mind as the students go back, um, that, uh, you know, just keep those things in mind. Um, so something that you mentioned is, is, you know, your daughter is in middle school, um, and you know, you're seeing a different use of, of, um, technology than when she was maybe in elementary school or transitioning into middle school. So I think something that it's parents would be really interested in knowing is as kids grow and mature and start to gain independence, how can parents scaffold safe online behavior? Um, and, and what does, what does that look like for different ages? Um, and, and I know it's changing so fast. It's almost hard to, to, even talk about it because this is simply a moment in time, but sort of with your expertise in technology and what you're seeing and your, you as a parent who have to live with this every day and the choices that you make, what do you recommend in terms of what's appropriate for development? So I think the, the, probably the most basic building block for, for something like that is what they call a, a contract, a digital contract. And some some of your listeners and yourself may be familiar with this, but the, the concept is that you know the parents and the children uh, come together and say, hey, here's here's the acceptable use um, of this device, and parents are the ones that pay for it, right? Parents are the ones that uh, you know are are paying for um, you know the services and the, and the device itself, and so parents have a have a reason to ensure that it's being used appropriately. So. What you often see is these digital contracts where things like, um, you know, a common example is parents should always have access to that device. They should always have uh, the password to be able to get in and they should be able to do that at any time. Hmm. Um, you know, not, you know, when the child decides, but parents should be allowed to uh, have access to that device at any time. The PIN number should be known. Um, there will be limits on. Um, you know, another aspect of a contract would be limits on certain applications that the uh, child can use or download, and then limits on how much time they could spend on that. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. build into that uh, things like you know you're you're only allowed on the device an hour a day, two hours a day, whatever the the parent decides. Um, or maybe you know you have to earn uh, access to to uh, the device or earn you know credits or something like that. So I think parents can be really creative about how they build that contract. But the, the point of that is to make sure that um, that both, you know, I mean, there's there needs to be collaboration between the parents and, and the child about about that. But the, the parent has the ultimate say, right? Because again, mm-hmm. like I said, they, they're the ones that bought it and, you know, pay for the, the service. But I think the point is to make sure that there's an agreement upon what is acceptable use, you know, within that with that device. And should it be broken, you can always point back to that contract and say, hey, you know, we agree that this is the way it's going to be used. You broke that, you lose, you know, some privileges. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one of the the big foundations when it comes to um, how to best uh, approach, you know, managing a, a device and and child's use of that today. Mm-hmm. And I I could see it making sense that that's a bit of a living document that changes as. Yeah their needs change, the children's needs change as they get older and maybe have different, um, you know, they're, they have a car, so their needs are different or, um, you know, they're out of the house more, or if they need to be using whatever it is more for school. Um, but then also just as they get older and, and hopefully, you know, their brain is developing and they're able to take on a little bit more independence. Um, 
But then I can also see that being, you know, sort of a two-way street is if, if things aren't going well, it's like, okay, because this is a living document, we need to revisit some of these things and think about what's going to work for our family. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, so what, um, we've talked sort of now about devices, sort of the, the, the physical device and sort of the idea of how to move, move about it and, and what kids are using it for. Um, what about specifically social media? Um, that is, I know its own beast. Um, what should parents be considering around social media that might be different than say just, oh, I'm going to be researching this topic for an academic project? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a, the sticky one. <laughs> um, yeah, like the you, big buckets, the things that you're like, oh man, these are the things that we need to make sure that that parents are talking to their kids about. Yeah, I think you know it comes down to one basic question, and that is, uh, you know, is this something? Because uh, the idea behind social media is, is sharing, right? It's about right. you know connecting and sharing. Um, so a lot of times, you know, I, I have a very, I'm not that popular, so I have a very <laughs> small list of, of, uh, people, you know, friends on, on my Facebook, uh, LinkedIn's a little bit different, but on, you know, my Facebook, uh, and I'm not that active on it, but that's not the point. The point is that, you know, the, the amount of connections that I have are people that I know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's, you know, I've seen where there's people, uh, that have you know hundreds or thousands of of um, or tens of thousands of, of connections on on a Facebook, and it's like you really know these people. Like you know, would you be able to uh, point this person out on the street if you pass them? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think one of the one of the major questions I've always asked myself is like, would I stop and talk to this person on the street if I met them? Mm-hmm. And if I if the answer to that is no, then uh, you know, do we really need to be connected? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, obviously there's times where, you know, you make exceptions and it makes sense. But um, so I think, you know, really, really knowing who your connections are and, and who it is that you're uh, connected with is, is important. But that kind of uh, dovetails into the, to the idea of, um, you know, what you share online is permanent. Uh, there is no delete online. Um, there's plenty of the social media platforms have a delete button. You can remove pictures. You can remove posts. Uh, they're never gone. Right. Um, there's always a way to recover it. Uh, and not only that, but you know, those connections that you have. So if you have 10,000 people in your connection list and you post a picture that maybe you're not proud of or something that you don't really feel like was the right decision, you know, maybe the next day or, or time, you know, when as time goes by, um, any one of those 10,000 connections that you have could have taken a screenshot and reshared it. Right. Um, right. so we're all, you know, kind of familiar with the, um, with plenty of people that are in a public eye that they, maybe posted something, they tried to delete it, but it, it's already out there, you know, right. dozens of people have already taken screenshots and reshared it. So I think, you know, one of the other questions to ask is, you know, is this something that's really worth sharing? And is this something that I'm prepared to have everybody in the world see? Because mm-hmm. um, we're living in a, a completely different environment today where, again, once you put something online, it's there. Um, and, uh, you know, working in the technology space, um, I know that that's, there's, it's yes, data is everywhere. As soon as it, as soon as it hits the internet, it's it's out there. So right, and this is I get such a hard thing for kids to grasp because it's it a is... hard thing for adults to grasp. <laughs> too. I mean, I, there's plenty of ones where you know, oh, that didn't age well, <laughs> but you know, right. it's yeah, you just yeah. Yeah, it's and and just in terms of their development, that they often, you know, these aren't things that they consider. Um, right. And and as you said, you know, maybe it would be acceptable at one stage, and then you grow up a little bit. You're like, oh, that was that was definitely a bummer choice. Right. Right. Um, so I can see that that's a really important conversation to have with your kids, and it sounds like it should probably be an ongoing um, yeah. conversation. Um, and I did just want to add, you know, one additional point. I think it's a little bit more unique for for the younger generations compared to, you know, us that are a little bit older in, in this space. But, you know, um, you're starting to see colleges, uh, employers uh, start to look back at social media. And, you know, those, again, are things where the choices that you make now when you're a teenager and when you're, you know, preteen, teenager, getting in your 20s and, and things like that, um, those, those things exist online. Uh, colleges do, um, you know, take a look at that. Um, HR departments within organizations, uh, 
that's the first thing they look at, you know, is what are your, what's your social media? Um, you know, what is your, what's your online profile look like? Right. And uh, they will take that into consideration when hiring. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good reality check. Yeah. Um, what, what should parents be thinking about with different types of precautions that might need to be taken on different platforms? You know, cause we had, you know, here we are, you know, on Facebook, but then, you know, we were talking about social media and that really has such a wide range, whether sure. it's, you know, TikTok to Twitter and then everything in between. Um, some things feel more benign and then some things feel maybe less so. Um, are there, yeah. do you have specific recommendations for specific platforms? Um, so that's a hard one because a lot of it, you know, it comes down to each of the platforms again is about sharing. Um, right. But you have different types of uh, methods of sharing and different types of, um, I'll say, you know, uh, parameters or, or, you know, different types of um, things that go into like Snapchat, for instance, you know, their, their whole thing is that it doesn't, it doesn't exist for a long period of time, right? It's, it's quick, you know, um, you post and it's gone, you know, within a certain period of time, whereas Facebook, it resides, you know, out there as long as you leave it out there. Um, Twitter, you have, you know, more of a, a textual kind of uh, uh, platform where you're limited to a certain amount of characters. And then TikTok, you know, is all, you know, videos similar to YouTube, but in shorter form. So I think there's a lot of, you know, it really depends on on the platform. I know, um, you know, I, I don't have it here, you know, on the top of my head, but it's something that I could certainly share afterwards. But, you know, there's a lot of um, basic uh exactly what you're you're asking for is like what is what's the criteria for each one of these you know apps and what are the concerns for those but you know it really comes down to again kind of those basic questions of um is this something that i'm willing to have my employer see um you know i I, i've said this to um you know to kids before like is this is this something you'd be happy that your principal would like to see right right um, because you know it, it's one thing to say you know would you like mom and dad to see this or would you like your grandma to see it or something like that um but when you bring in something you know somebody that most likely the student has some affection for and sees as an authority figure uh you know would you be proud of you know this being shown to your principal and maybe that's you know that's um you know changes things a little bit but to get you know to get to your question there i think each one of those platforms does have different types of, you know, um, settings and controls around those. Um, but it really just comes down to, you know, the content that's being shared and, and is it really, is it really appropriate regardless of what platform you're on? Mm -hmm. Um, in our September issue that was just published for Chesapeake Family Life, um, we ended up interviewing um, a bunch of kids about school violence, and we took a bunch of different perspectives on that and, and got a bunch of different voices. Um, but something that a lot of the students highlighted was that social media was a source of stress and even violence. Um, do you have any advice, particularly for kids and students, on managing that, sort of when they do stumble across things that um, make them really uncomfortable, sort of how to navigate that? It's hard. Uh, you know, one of the ways that I normally describe this is that, you know, when I was growing up um, and a lot of, you know, the parents uh, growing up, it's when you got off the bus, the bullying stopped, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, whereas today uh, it's 24 um, seven. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a different environment. Um, however, there is, you know, it, and I'm kind of hesitating in a way because sometimes this doesn't work, but I'll, mm -hmm. I'll throw this out here as, as a recommendation is that you know, you can always block people, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're, let's say you're on, um, you know, um, Facebook and somebody is, you know, harassing you or whatever, and, and you're, you know, you feel like you're being uh, bullied, uh, you can always block that person. Um, you know, that's one, you know, kind of quick, quick way to, to deal with it. Um, but the other thing really in terms of recommendations is same thing with, you know, if you're sharing something, somebody can take a screenshot and, and you know, keep, uh, keep uh, that uh, going in a, and alive on, online. <clears throat> it, you know, that type of behavior is happening and it's a concern for, you know, the student and the parent. Um, keep a record of it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the other thing is that police are always, you know, that's the first thing they're going to ask you. They're going to say, you know, 
show me screenshots, show me the communication. Um, never hesitate to get the police involved because um, mm -hmm. that's what they're they're there for. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's an unfortunate reality reality these days where um, <clears throat> you have a lot of different um, ways of being able to what we would call force multiply bullying and violence because it's right. you know you can amplify it quickly uh, online um, and you know not just quickly but uh, exponentially, right? You, you know, the more people you share something with, the, the quicker it, you know, catches fire. Um, and unfortunately that's, you know, kind of the way the platforms work, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as, as intended, right. but, you know, I think it comes down to, you know, making sure that you keep track, uh, you know, make sure there's a paper trail, get the police involved early, especially if you feel like there's, um, a, uh, a possibility for, for harm, mm -hmm. um, you know, or violence or something like that, uh, definitely get the police involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that documentation part, I think that's a, a really good recommendation. Um, what do you think are some common mistakes that parents make around online safety and their children? I think over trusting, you know, mm. I think it comes down to, um, you know, there's, I mean, all of us that are parents always assume that uh, not my child, right? It, that right. my child would never do that. Um, right. And while that, you know, may uh, be the case in, in some, you know, some cases, um, peer pressure is real, you know, and, and there's, um, a lot of, um, there's a lot of pressure for, for children to behave similar to their peers. Um, and so I think, um, you know, I think that's a, a definite, uh, um, yeah, a definite concern. What do you see then for um, the solution to that? Is it just monitoring? Is it more regular conversations with your kids? Um, is it, you know, sort of building up that, that family culture of, of like, we're on this together and we make mistakes and we talk about it? Like, how, do, how have you handled that in your house? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the, the case. I mean, it, it's, it's about knowing, you know, your child and, and mm -hmm. being involved in, the, in your child's uh, uh, digital life. And you know, kind of going back to that, uh, that contract. And maybe that means that you have to, you know, uh, review that and make sure that there's, um, that you have, uh, everything in there that, that, um, you know, makes sense for, for both you and the child. But I think it, you know, it really comes down to, uh, being in tune with your child, being, um, aware of, you know, their behavior online, because sometimes, you know, again, like you could be shocked, like it, it you, you have this, mentality again that it's not going to be my my child would never do something like that um but uh you'd be surprised sometimes i think if you pick up uh, your your child's uh device or phone and look at you know messages depending on you know obviously depending on uh, the situation but right. um and some of it may be completely um innocent but at the same time you're like wow where did where did they where did they learn that you know? um, right right so yeah, I think it, it really does come down to making sure that uh, you're in tune with um, with your child and make sure that you understand uh, their their digital behavior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What other just sort of tips and um, whether tips or tricks or recommendations that you have uh, for parents just in general? Sure. I mean, there are, you know, there, it's not all about. Um, so, again, coming from the cybersecurity space, we have uh, we have different types of what we call controls um, where, you know, here's, here's the way we can uh, contain, you know, certain things uh, that uh, we're concerned about. And I think it's not all about, you know, the digital contract and, and having conversations because those things are not, um, those are more soft controls in the sense of, you know, they're, they're, you put them out there as guidance and you right. put them out there as, you know, you here's, here's the framework. Um, there are technical controls, so you can um, get uh, apps or uh, different um, uh, technology in the devices, whether it's a phone, whether it's uh, a tablet or something like that uh, for monitoring. Uh, you can also do that for your home uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, there's plenty of uh, monitoring uh, tools that um, not just monitoring, but more. And when I say monitoring, I mean more that, you know, it'll block certain uh, sites, it'll, you know, mm -hmm. turn off the internet at certain times, same thing with your device, you know, the device itself, um, you can have it, you know, uh, disable certain apps during certain time periods, um, make sure that the, you know, they're not, uh, spending a lot of time on, on certain apps. Um, and again, at the same time, you can have it, uh, 
basically look at messages um, and flag for like inappropriate things. So, um, so it does go beyond just, you know, those more softer controls um, and you can get more technical controls in place um, to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Do you have any favorites? Um, so there is one that's pretty well known called Bark, uh, which is um, used for uh, devices. Um, and then I'm trying to remember the name of the, the Wi-Fi uh, one that, uh, that I've used in the past. Um, oh, Circle. Sorry, it's uh, called Circle. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's something, basically a little box that you can plug into your, your network at home. Um, and it does, uh, you know, some making sure that there's no inappropriate sites uh, that are being accessed. And you, can, and you can change the profile, you know, based on uh, the age of the child and, and what you're allowing and what you're not allowing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually talked to the uh, to someone from Circle about okay. about that device. It, it's now I think that was a year or two ago. It's been a while, but yeah, that was. It sounds like a really interesting one and useful. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, do you have any other sort of recommendations or resources for parents on the topic of online safety? Um. And I know you know you have a book. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that. But like, what? Where are some go tos for kids and for parents to learn more about this? Um, not to, I guess, I'm trying to think how to put this. So, um, there are, there are groups on Facebook that are helpful. Uh, there is, you know, parenting in tech, you know, tech world and, um, just, you know, technology, technology or parenting, you know, and technology, uh, there's plenty of groups out there, um, which are, are, are really helpful. I, I'm, um, a member in a couple of those, just because I like to keep track of, you know, what, uh, what other parents are doing and, and how, you know, they're reacting. And, and sometimes it's, you know, you get the heartbreaking stories of, of people that are kind of going through, um, you know, some challenges with their, you know, with their kids. Um, but right. in a way, those are where you learn lessons, right? Um, unfortunately, you know, that's, you know, sometimes how, um, but it's important for parents to kind of share that so that others don't, you know, go through those, those same type of, of issues. So there are, you know, plenty of groups uh, online uh, to help with uh, that kind of stuff. Um, there's uh, usually not just, me, but there's other people in, within the community that also do a lot of awareness. Um, and uh, um, like I've given talks before to uh, school libraries um, or public libraries, um, and I've gone into you know schools for uh, just very specific um, talks about you know what to be aware of and what to be concerned about. Um, and I'm not the only one. I know, I know a lot of other communities have that type of um, support. Uh, so definitely reach out to like your local library or your school. Um, a lot of times the schools will have, you know, some type of a, a cyber awareness uh, type of um, program or, or feature, you know, built in throughout the year. Um, so those are always good resources. There's plenty of, you know, stuff online. Um, online's always a uh, uh, you know, Google is always your friend, as I say, you know, if you're looking for something specific or, uh, you know, a certain question, that's always a good route to go as well. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I, you know, I, like you said, I, I wrote a, a series of <laughs> children's uh, books on it um, about a, 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 um, a, a young girl who gets her first device and, and trying to really navigate the, the digital world with her parents and, and her friends. And they learn a lot of different lessons, including things around uh, cyberbullying and um, and uh, you know losing devices and um, just talking to strangers and and things like that. So it's um, and even getting scammed and so there's a lot of good content in there. And I try not to write it in a way that's <clears throat> luxury. You know, it's <clears throat> more in a story. You know, hopefully compelling story. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, it was uh, there's there's uh, another good resource for something like that. Absolutely. What's the title of the first in the series? Uh, it's called uh, Alicia Connected. That's the series. And the, and the first book is called uh, The Big Gift. So that's uh, when Alicia gets her first uh, device and starts learning about uh, just the ins and outs, you know, things like making sure the device is secure and that you, um, you know, have like a password on it and, you know, the, just the, the kind of simple mundane types of things. But again, I try to weave it into a story that's, uh, that's compelling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what's your target age range for the series? So six to nine years, year old uh, um, is the target range, um, because I think that's, you know, when kids are starting to get introduced uh, to technology, mm -hmm. um, at least, you know, they're, if they don't already have a device, they're, they're 
they're seeing their friends have it and they're they're asking questions about it. Um, so I think that's you know the appropriate age um, for um, you know for that for that type of information. And of course, you know it's a children's chapter book, so um, it is sort of like early reading, you know, type of uh, for for kids. But at the same time, I think it's good for parents to read uh, with their children because it gives them you know there's something in there for everybody. Because I think hopefully. Um, you know, parents will also see that and say, oh, hey, you know, maybe we need to think about, um, you know, do we need to make sure that there's a, a password or a pin, you know, on, on the device that um, should we, you know, make sure that we um, don't, you know, use our, uh, put our devices in, in the bathroom and bedroom and stuff like, you know, that kind of stuff. So. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that sounds really helpful in a, in a great way to sort of get kids on the right path. Um, really, no matter what their age is, and, and a good reminder, yeah. as you said, for parents as well. Um, I think sometimes us adults can be the worst offenders, um, but we're all learning together. So it's a kid. Well, and that's the thing, kids. You know, they they mimic their parents, right? <laughs> so. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Derek Fisher, for joining me today, and thank you all of our viewers and listeners. Make sure that you visit ChesapeakeFamily for up-to-date local information on home, health, and living for today's Maryland parent. This episode will be archived on ChesapeakeFamily.com in both video and podcast format. I'm Janet Jefferson with Chesapeake Family Life and Third Floor Views. Thanks so much.